So good morning, good afternoon, wherever your uh, home base may be today. We are here for the second session of the Future Leaders Program with NAFA. My name is Emily Cabbage, and again, I am the Director of Marketing, and I'm kind of your uh, staff guide through this journey through Future Leaders. And today we have a very special guest, Evelyn Geller, who is out of uh, Long Island, New York. And so she's going to be talking today a little bit about um, finding your career journey and getting your path going and things like that. So, um, Evelyn, I'll turn it over to you to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, get started on your presentation. All right. Well, thank you, um, Emily. And uh, let me start out by saying thank you, Emily, for being my co-pilot here today in uh, navigating the presentation. I want to welcome everyone that's joining us. I, I know that we have traditionally had students from different colleges and universities from around the country. So it's always very, very exciting to be able to engage with the audience. My goal today is to kind of shift the conversation. As you know, this is a four-part series that NAFA has put together to give the, um, the audience the opportunity to hear a little bit about the industry, learn a bit about the different career opportunities that are out there, and to help you kind of understand how to navigate through this process if a career in financial services is something that you're considering in the future. So I want to thank NAFA for their commitment to the next generation of advisors and uh, um, bringing you here um, to us. As Emily indicated, um, I'm in New York, uh, specifically Long Island. Not sure if we have anyone from the local area coming to us um, today. Um, I'm the current managing director at Forest Hills Financial Group. We're located in Melville, Long Island. Um, we do have another office in the New York City area, literally across the street from Grand Central, for those of you that know New York a little bit. Um, and it's going to be my pleasure to really talk to you a little bit about the career from the perspective of someone who is responsible for talent acquisition, attracting the next generation of advisors, and really helping to develop that next generation of advisors. I started my career quite some time ago, um, and I've held several roles. I'm going to go through that a little bit. But I started out as a financial representative, and then eventually uh, went into different roles. So I know the role very well from having done it, but also from being able to attract talent to come into this industry and really be able to um, develop um, career talent into this business. So with that being said, I'd love to get started here. If Emily, if you can uh, turn it to the next page, I think that will be a little um, helpful. I actually have a little bit of an agenda so that you know what direction we're going to be going um, here today. Um, I'll start out by kind of sharing my career trajectory, um, because there are times where candidates will look at this career and say, well, I'm not exactly sure that I'm the ideal candidate. And the truth is, is that I was the most unlikely candidate to come into this career um, for several reasons. Uh, number one, I had never even considered the career opportunity and talking to people about money and their finances, you know, um, and, and really reaching their financial goals because I was a psych major at Fordham University. I was a psychology major with a minor in sociology. So I obviously had um, an interest in really understanding people. And it wasn't until later on in my career that I understood that that was uh, an amazing skill set to bring to the table in this particular career. But I didn't have the finance background, so I had to learn everything from the ground up. I didn't know the difference between a mutual fund or a stock or a bond, right? So it, my, my knowledge was nearly zero, right? So I had to start from the ground up, if you will. Um, I also didn't have role models in my life that were entrepreneurial. Most of my network were traditionalists. 
um, whether they were teachers and pharmacists and engineers, um, school principals, they were very traditional roles where basically they worked for someone else. They had a solid schedule. They worked a certain schedule. Um, and when I went home to tell, especially my mom, what it was I was looking to do, it was a little bit foreign to her, right? So I had no role model whatsoever. So I was really the most unlikely fit to come into this. However, I was fortunate enough to find a mentor very early on in my career who was willing to invest the time, willing to invest the energy to really teach me the business, coach me along the way, um, allow for me to participate from um, watching him. So he was a great model for me. I was able to go on appointments until I started to really build my confidence. So even though I didn't have the background, what I did have was the fact that I was part of an organization where I identified a, a mentor right away. And he was the one that allowed me to really take off in this career. I'm also gonna talk to you a little bit about um, you know, what the benefits of pursuing something in financial services as an entrepreneur, because every career has, you know, it's positive aspects and those where perhaps you wish it were a little bit different. Um, when I came into the career, I didn't come directly from college. Um, I did go into um, corporate life, worked for small businesses for a few years. And the thing that I wasn't getting there that I knew I had the ability to get here was the flexibility and the freedom to be able to um, monitor my schedule, but still get the work done. So we're gonna talk a little bit about things like that that are career benefits for you. I'll get into um, you know, some, some traits of what you'll need to succeed in this business. And then as you start to explore this, you have to be a proactive party in figuring out what the right fit is, right? What, what things to be looking for? What questions perhaps to ask um, those that you're interviewing with so that once you make that decision, you feel that it's the right fit for you, whether it's you know, the, the culture in the organization, if it's the mentorship that you're looking for, um, is there opportunity for growth? All those are really important things. You need to identify what those are because you're gonna make a decision as to what is the right firm. And the way to be able to do that is really asking some really good questions as well. So that's a little bit about the agenda that I'm gonna be covering here. Um, Emily, if we can uh, flip over to the next page, let's get started with this. All right, so I did indicate that I was gonna share a little bit about my career trajectory. And um, you'll notice that my first stop into the business was being a financial services representative. Um, one of the things that really came very clear to me in that role was that I liked helping people, that I had the ability to engage in conversations that perhaps sometimes people were not having, right? Money conversations about goals, about what their time horizon was. And I gave them the ability to, to really um, understand how they were feeling and where they wanted to go. Um, and for me, uh, that aspect of the business was truly priceless to be able to um, identify where someone's particular goals are and where they want to go. And then being able to come up with solutions to help those clients. And not just from the inception, because my, my goal was always to say to clients, I want to be that lifetime resource for you so that anytime that you're making a financial decision, you're thinking of Evelyn Geller, give me a call, even if it has nothing to do with products and services that we sell, but I am a comprehensive planner who's looking to really help you with all your decisions throughout your life. Now, at the beginning of our career, you're only getting maybe one license. And as time is evolving, you're getting variable licenses you're getting designations. So as you're growing, it allows you also to grow with your clients as well. 
Now, my regional vice president identified the fact that um, I worked with other newer agents along the way. I had this ability to transfer skills, to be able to teach a little bit, to train and to develop it, to develop them. So I got tapped on the shoulder. There was an opportunity for um, someone to be the regional training director in the Queens region. At the time, we had about 500 agents and about 20 offices. We were centrally um, located um, in the Jackson Heights area. So they needed people, an individual who could really um, develop and train and teach product knowledge, skill development, practice management, all the things that you're going to need as a practitioner. So I had a great opportunity to be able to do that in the Queens region, but also I did corporate training as well because all of the local regional individuals, whether it was Queens, Brooklyn, Long Island, Staten Island, participated in home office training as well. And I really truly enjoyed that because I got to meet a lot of people, not just from the Queens area, but all from the New York and New Jersey area. And I did that for a few years. It's it's always fun when you're traveling. I was young, I had no responsibilities. I basically lived out of a suitcase two months out of the, uh, out of uh, two weeks out of the month. And I was having a great time with that. But then life starts to change a little bit. And I decided, well, I want to be home a little bit more. Um, I was a newlywed. We were thinking about starting our family. Um, I moved out to Long Island. I no longer lived in the city. It was a little bit of a commute going into New Jersey. And I went to my regional vice president and say, hey, is there an opportunity for me to be able to build out my own team, to be able to identify talent, bring them in, help them to be successful. And I always say that life is about timing. That situation presented itself pretty shortly after, and I was able to become a sales manager. And in all these opportunities, it gave me a chance to be able to stretch on the skill sets that I have built on, but also to build new ones into, um, into my skill sets, if you will. Um, I had another role a few years down the road. I had the opportunity to launch a fintech company inside of an insurance company. And it was a very interesting project. It was a very small team of us. We had one investor, which was the insurance company, and we launched a content platform for um, content platform for that company. Um, interesting project. We worked on it for a few years. Um, we got many subscribers um, and we got to learn what it is to be a little bit of a startup, right? Never imagined from like years before when I started out as a financial representative that my career would take all these different directions. And then today I'm a managing director for a very successful office right here on Long Island. And again, it's about building out not only my own personal practice, but it's also about building my team. Now, I share this story with you because I want you to understand that you may decide that your entry point is building your practice, but you're going to have opportunities to do other things. For myself, it was training, eventually a sales manager, launching a fintech company. But I know plenty of people that start out, you know, in the financial representative role and perhaps go into marketing for their company's home office, or maybe they go into compliance, or maybe they remain as a, as a regional training director. My mentor never wanted to be anything besides being a financial representative, a financial advisor, if you will. And he had a very successful career. So what's wonderful about this career is having the ability to really build um, your career. And if you're looking for growth, those opportunities present themselves. Now, I'll also mention that throughout my career, I've also been very, very fortunate to have leadership roles outside of just what I did um, during the day for my own business. I'm a firm believer in giving back to the industry um, and pull um, the next generation of individuals to be leaders and to see success. So one of the um, accolades, if you will, or things that I'm most proud of is becoming president of an organization called Women in Insurance and Financial Services. 
And the mission of that organization is to attract, develop, and advance women within the industry. So again, it was something that was in alignment with my core principles, my core values, but I wanted to make an impact not only at my local firm, but to be able to do that on, on a nationwide basis. And I'm currently proud to say that I'm also a trustee um, for NAFA, involved in many projects with them, uh, one of them being um, this great program that NAFA has put together, um, also working in the DEI space with NAFA, doing uh, many things to help advocate on behalf of the industry. So not only um, have I had a great career that's taken me in a lot of different directions, but it's also given me an opportunity to give back. So if you're the type of individual that's all in, wants to give back, this is a great career to be able to do that for. So Emily, if you can go to the next page. All right, so let's talk a little bit about career benefits. And, and certainly I'm not talking about things like compensation or um, medical benefits or anything. That. That's all part of the package. And every, every company and every carrier has different packages, if you will. But what I'm talking really about is some of those ancillary benefits that um, I discovered were part of this great career. Um, as a financial advisor, um, today, my practice is virtual. Um, I'm actually coming to you from, from my um, home office today. There are days where I have the ability to go into the office. I'm working with some, some agents on some cases, but I have the flexibility to be able to choose the things and where I want to be able to work. And I think that in today's world, we're looking for that um, flexibility because it helps with other things and other interests that we have. So this morning I was networking, I had a client meeting at 1030, and then I made it back to be able to, to meet here with each and every one of you. That flexibility and freedom has changed over my lifetime. Um, when my children were little, um, I wanted that flexibility and freedom so that I can get them on the school bus. Or if one of them got sick during the day, that I'd have the ability to kind of shut the lights off in my office and be able to pick them up, right? So what I started to see is that this career, depending on where you are in life, can give you a lot of that flexibility and, and that freedom that you're looking for. If um, there was a point in my life before the kids came around where, you know, getting a round of golf during the day with maybe three other ladies was a networking opportunity, but also an opportunity to do something that I love as well, right? So if you're looking for something that's less traditional, less rigid, where they'll tell you start your day at a certain hour, end it at a certain hour, take lunch at a certain hour, but you're looking for more of that flexibility and freedom, that this is a career that gives you the ability to do that. Now, with that flexibility and freedom is certainly the responsibility of knowing that at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, there are certain goals that you have to hit. So you really have to be self-disciplined, if you will. But for me, flexibility and freedom, huge benefit of the career. I think I touched on this a, a little bit, right? The career life, I don't call it balance. I call it blend because it, just like today, I went for a networking meeting, I have a client meeting, I'm here with you folks. I've got a doctor's appointment that's coming up next, right? So in the middle of my day, I'm able to do something that needs to get done and then I can get right back on, on track from a business perspective as well. So it doesn't have to be an either or because in, in, in my world, the way I think, balance is about choosing one and giving up the other, right? I don't wanna be able to do that. I want to be successful not only as, as a career individual, but also as, as a human being, as an individual as well. Number three was extremely um, important to me. I, I needed that upside income potential because what I saw, I, I'm a graduate of Fordham for any of those here that know Fordham in, in Rose Hill campus. Um, when I graduated school, I went into corporate life, but there was really no upside income potential. 
And when I examined my life and thought about what I wanted to achieve in life, the kind of lifestyle that I wanted, the things I wanted to give back to community, you cannot give what you don't have, right? I was looking for something that would give me that upside income potential, right? That I would have the ability to um, control and contribute to my success, which would lead to that upside income potential. So that's another benefit of this, right? My family and I, we're traveling to Europe this year, right? That's gonna require a couple of extra bucks, which will require me to work a little bit harder so that again, um, I'm able to, to um, fulfill that dream that we had of traveling to Europe this summer. Uh, recognition and, and opportunity. Well, opportunity, you know, all those opportunities I spoke to you about only occurred because of the successes that I was having, because I put myself out there, because I got involved in the industry, because I was willing, by the way, to lead with a giving hand to my fellow advisors that gave me that role of being regional training director because the RVP recognized that, right? So I put myself in that position to be able to, to be considered for opportunities, right? Um, and, and mentorship was really key, but the one thing I will say was super critical to my growth um, in the industry has always been about um, identifying sponsors, individuals that would take time to not only develop me and help me, but also have the ability to speak on my behalf when I was not present in the room when certain opportunities presented themselves, right? Um, recognition um, is a big part of what we do, right? So whether it's individual recognition office recognition, regional recognition. I've been fortunate enough to be part of all of that. When my children were small, um, as a producer, you know, um, I hit certain goals that I had set for myself and that the company set for me. And uh, we were fortunate enough to participate in conferences that the company paid for. Um, and it, it just added to added pressure for me because I do remember one, one particular trip, my kids had a wonderful time. And um, that night they said, where are we going next year, right? Because they understood that um, this was part of some of those perks that I was getting um, from the company and they wanted to make sure that I stayed on track so that they can come back and see their friends that they had just built um, from the community of people from the company. And then certainly making an impact. Um, you know, nothing that, um, that, that we do does not, everything that we do has an impact on people's lives. I've had the unfortunate um, task of delivering death claims to families who have lost family members. Um, just before this program, Emily and I were talking about the last few years, craziness with COVID. Part of the delivery of, of those death claims were policies that I wrote many, many years ago, by the way, to family members, right? So my mom lost her husband to COVID and I lost my brother-in-law to COVID as well, right? Um, and I will say that what happens at that moment is you realize that the planning that you had put into place would now keep, in this case, my sister and my mother in the lifestyle that they're accustomed to, that they did not need to sell their homes, that my sister didn't have to get a second job because we had done the proper planning, right? But but on the flip side of that, I've had the opportunity to visit with families um, and celebrate um, things like their kids' college education, right? Because of the plan that we had put together many, many years ago or retirement parties, because I was able to help someone through that planning process to make sure that they retired when they wanted to and to the lifestyle that they wanted to. And there's I always say that it's the impact for me that is completely priceless, having nothing to do with the dollars and cents, because it is real and it's it's the things that sometimes keep people up at night. And if I'm able to fulfill that for someone, that's a much greater purpose for myself. So I wanted to share some of that with you in terms of the benefits of this career. Hopefully some of this is resonating with you. Maybe it's even opening up your mind beyond what you initially thought the career would give you. Um, and at the end, we're gonna take some questions. So 
If you've got any, please just hold on till the end. We have a couple more slides. And Emily, if you can take it to the next one. Okay, so I'm, I, I put this slide together to um, put myself in your position as you consider approaching this career opportunity, right? If I were you, what sorts of things might I want to get more information as you start to vet different companies that perhaps you would interview with, right? So the, the, the top one is training and development. It's something that I hear from candidates when I'm interviewing every single week where they'll say to me, well, how am I gonna learn this business? And my response to them is you're going to get we have a curriculum-based training program that you will participate. In my particular case, we have training every single day for one hour. We believe one hour is the chunk that most people can digest at a time, right? But training and then applying that to the real world are two distinct things. And that's why development is critical. This is almost like medical residency. You'll go to medical school, you'll have the working knowledge but on day one, you cannot perform surgery, right? Because you've never really done it before, if you will. You know from a, an educational perspective, but you don't know from a practical perspective. So our program is designed to not only give you the book knowledge, but more importantly, to work with you face-to-face -face with clients, opening the conversation, taking them through a financial planning process, identifying what their goals are, understanding you know, what planning they've done in the past, right? And then taking the necessary steps along the way. A mentor, a manager, we have a protege program at our firm, that senior person will work with you at your initial beginnings until you start to build some confidence and start building up your skill sets. So big distinction, training and development. Um, again, it's something that you should be inquiring about. What does that look like? Who will I be working with? What does the training program look like? What are, what are some of the courses that I'm gonna be learning about? And then more importantly, who's gonna support me in that process, right? Do you have coaches? Do you have mentors, right? How does that work a little bit? Is there an opportunity to participate in study groups? Um, some of the best ideas that I've ever come up with have come from study groups. So I've borrowed some of that and really enhanced it a little bit, right? So is there an opportunity to participate in study groups? How many study groups are there? Um, are the study groups all senior people or do we have, you know, the younger generation who are forming study groups, right? And for some of this, you can leverage some of your professional associations, right? So at NAFA, we have the young advisors advisors, right, that get together and are a very tight-knit group as well. Also, do you have an opportunity to really identify a specialization, almost like a medical doctor, right? Or will you start out as a general practitioner? Well, that all depends. Is that firm specializing in certain markets? Or do they, you know, serve everyone, right? or if it's an organization that has a team that specializes. Uh, my particular firm has a number of um, teams where they work solely in the medical market. We have several teams that solely work in the um, legal market, working with attorneys, right? So you want to ask a little bit about, you know, what does that look like? Well, what types of clients do um, advisors in the firm work with, right? Are they specializing or are they general practitioners? You also want to always be advancing um, your knowledge, by the way. And in the very uh, first slide, there were a whole bunch of letters under my name. Those are all designations that um, I've committed to getting over the years. And the learning is, is not stopped 
at all. Um, I'm, I'm in the midst of acquiring another securities license at this point. And then there's one other designation I've got my eye on. Because if you're not learning, <laughs> then what's happening is you're going in the reverse, right? There's new product development, there's new legislation that comes down that impacts you know, how we conduct business. And that's what NAFER is all about, right? Being involved from an advocacy perspective. So it's really, really important that you know, okay, I'm starting out as a financial advisor. Will I be on a team? Am I a single practitioner? Am I going to specialize? Are there study groups? But you also want to learn what is the company's commitment to you advancing and getting your next degree, your next designation, if you will. Very important to new people coming in is, is there someone who's going to help you market yourself, right? And uh, develop a marketing plan based on a lot of things, right? Based on if you're going to be a general practitioner or, or, spe or you're going to specialize, right? Um, can they help you identify groups that you can network with? Right. Is there someone dedicated to that? Right. Um, can someone help you with your website? What about LinkedIn? That's a great professional network to get involved with. Right. But we all need a little help when we're first doing all those marketing pieces, if you will. Right. So is there someone in the organization that can help you with that? Um, and then, of course, the last bullet touched is, again, on upside career opportunities. Where can I see myself five years from now? three years from now, two years from now, what do I need to do to get from point A to point B, right? If they can map it out for you, then it can happen, right? But if it's too vague, if you will, then you've got to question that as well. All right, Emily, next slide. So the firm with the right fit. Um, make sure that you're not only learning about the company, but also doing a deep dive on the local firm. Um, there are many great companies that are out there with a great brand, a great reputation, but every local firm operates perhaps a little bit differently right? So you want to find out a little bit, do a deep dive, find out about the leadership. You know, how long have they been in business? How did they start their career? How did they build their careers? Interview other advisors. If they don't offer, ask to be able to do that. Um, can you sit through one of their training classes so that you can get a sense of the quality of the training that's being delivered? But not only that, be able to kind of interact, even it's over Zoom, by the way, to really see who else is part of the organization, right? Are they engaged, right? Um, what does that look like? Hey, that person looked like maybe they could be a great mentor for me based on what they asked today, right? So participate um, maybe in one training class. So again, you get a sense of the culture of that organization. Some companies will use a, an assessment um, some of those are like personality in nature. Um, if they do ask you to complete it, um, I would ask to get the results. It's a great way for you to self-discover and learn a little bit about yourself and what's going to work for you. Hello, Ms. Cheryl. Great seeing you. Welcome. Um, Get from an advisor. What does the day-to-day -day look like, by the way? And, and I always answered that question, by the way. It's a question I always got is, it, it's not what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, but maybe let's take a look at what the week would look like, right? Because um, what's interesting about this career is that no two days are alike, okay? Any advisor who's been doing this for a while will tell you that, right? And it's part of that freedom and flexibility that we talked about before. Um, ask to see if they'll help you with your initial marketing and business plan, because they'll be able to come up with ideas. You'll be able to brainstorm and really think through, you know, if you were launching your career, you're now the CEO of your business. How do you do that? How do you launch successfully? How do you begin to expand? How do you discover the networks that perhaps that you should become part of, right? How do you leverage social media? They can really be able to help you with that.
You also want to find out about the licenses, right? What will they sponsor you for? Um, what's your initial investment? You might have to get some study materials on your own, or do they invest in that? What if um, for myself, I'm in New York, but maybe I want to do business in Florida with Cheryl Canzanella, right? So do they allow me to get, you know, non-resident licenses? Do they even pay for it, right? So great questions again, uh, to be able to, um, to ask in those interviews. And then of course, you know, do you have an established process? I'm very process oriented, right? Because I believe it's the way that you can make a practice turnkey and it becomes scalable by having processes, right? So what processes are in place so that you can build the confidence that you need to really successfully launch and to be able to run a very successful business? Next, Emily. So these are the traits that oftentimes, you know, we look for in someone who's thinking about this career opportunity. We talked a little bit about the self-discipline, right? With that flexibility and that freedom also comes that self-discipline, right? Today, I've got that doctor's appointment, but I've got to get back on track, right? Only if you're self-disciplined are you able to do that, right? Do you have a passion for this business? Again, that ties into what we talked about a little bit in terms of purpose, and impact, right? Um, I get up every single day. I am incredibly excited to have the opportunity to meet new people, to engage in conversations, to be able to help and to be able to serve, right? So we believe that that's very important. If you're not passionate, then you know this, this is not going to work for you in any career whatsoever. What goals do you have in mind? I know that was a biggie for me, right? We talked about the upside income potential, but it wasn't just truly about the money. It was about the things that I wanted to achieve in life, not only for myself, but for my family and for my children, right? And I wanted to be a great role model for them as well. And then one biggie for me is always, I'm always looking for new ways to be able to do things. And the only way I can do that is if I'm open-minded, right? So are they going to truly coach you? I think coaching is such an important aspect of this because not only does it help you on the business side, but it's also a tremendous growth opportunity from a personal perspective as well. And I often say to people, you know, a year from now, we're going to reflect on this moment right here, and, and you're going to see how much growth you're experiencing. That's my commitment. 1% better every single day, and a year from later, you're going to be looking at yourself saying, wow, this, this has been a fantastic ride, and you constantly want to be growing more and more. Last slide. So this is my contact information for anyone who might be interested in reaching out. Feel free to do that. Uh, my cell phone number, like I said, I'm in Suffolk uh, County, Long Island. But uh, any friends of NAFA, friends of mine, and you're part of that community today, I want to thank you all for being here. And Emily, I know that you were kind of um, watching for the uh, chat. But if we've got some questions, I'm happy to take it because I believe we have a few minutes. Yes, absolutely. So feel free to use the chat feature in the um, Zoom or um, unmute and turn on your camera and um, let's have a dialogue because, you know, Evelyn's got some great insights. You know, um, as you'll see as we go through this future leaders program, everybody who's on here that's talking to kind of has a little bit of a different story. And, you know, there's, there's clearly not one set path, but, um, you know, definitely leverage this opportunity to um you know be here live with um with these leaders and ask questions and um you know and I know we I mentioned this last week with John Richardson but um you know connect with them on LinkedIn I know um Lily who's on the call today I know that she actually uh had a call with John um today or this week so thank you Lily for that um great opportunity for that and um you know, uh, so Lily, see, nothing nothing with NAFA happens in a vacuum. Um, John texted me right away and let me know that that you guys had connected. So, and then Jory says, um, thank you, great information on my work computer with no camera, microphone. Um, nope, thank you, Jory. I know that um, you had joined a little bit late, but, you know, 
this will be on demand. Um, we'll send out the recording here at the beginning of next week. And um, we also have Cheryl Canzanella that's on currently. And Cheryl's going to be one of our presenters next week as well. So um, I'll stop talking and let people... Yeah, guys, I, I think um, I'll just kind of chime in here, too. I think this is a great opportunity to um, get um, time with Evelyn because um, she has been in this industry for so long. And if you are really considering coming into this business um, to have time with um, a leader like Evelyn is is very valuable. So I would, and if you can't, um, if something pops up later, definitely ask a question later, like um, uh, uh, connecting with John, like Emily was saying, with um, uh, with uh, Lily. So uh, definitely take some time to ask Evelyn some questions. And and, and I have a couple of questions if, if nobody chimes in. Go ahead, Cheryl. Okay. Um, you know, so Evelyn, you know, I don't know, I did chime in a little bit, or I did join a little bit late, but um, this industry is, um, there's there's a lot of opportunity in this industry right now. And being that we've both been in it for a long time, myself over 20 years, um, I've seen a lot of um, changes in the industry. And right now, being a young individual, considering this could seem a little intimidating. Um, and, and, but I see a lot of opportunity because I see a lot of people who have been working for so long. That's one of the benefits about this industry is that they can work as long as they want. They're not retiring at age 65. They're continuing their business on well beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, but for a younger person coming in, I see a lot of people really starting to get that, you know, get into that retirement mode. So I see businesses looking for younger individuals to maybe be a succession plan. Mm -hmm. What, what have you seen with that? So I'm just going to go back to your initial comment about, um, you know, it could be a little daunting for young people to look at this and say to themselves, wow, there's, you know, there's a lot to learn and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a long runway. Right. Um, and what, what I'll say about that is that, you know, coming into this career, it, it wasn't a hundred percent clear to me whether or not I was going to succeed. Right. But I think a lot of it has to do with mindset. Right. Um, I've always been the, of the philosophy that when I look at an opportunity, um, it's OK to be first only and different because you can break ground that's there. Right. Now, I think to your point, your second point is that as um, generations are starting to um, think about exiting the business. And that's how I came in, by the way. My initial mentor had been in the business for 28 years and he was three years away from retirement and did ha and had no succession plan whatsoever. And he said to himself, I'm never going to retire because I just can't leave my clients, right? And it just happened to be that he was actually trying to recruit my husband, by the way. And one day I walked into my house and there he was in the living room having a conversation with Steve. And he said, listen, I'm not interested, Jack, but Evelyn's not happy where she is, right? Why don't you have a conversation with her, right? So it was purely accidental, but I don't believe there are any accidents, right? I was exactly where I needed to be, right? Um, so I, I think that, you know, you just have to be open-minded, um, have conversations, right? I think that's the critical thing. Don't hesitate to ask questions, you know, and, and get it from different sources. I think that's why NAFE is put this program together, by the way, to Emily's point is that you're going to be hearing from a number of speakers from different perspectives from different parts of the country, right? And they're going to gather a wealth of information that they can now take and make an informed decision, right? But I think there's tremendous opportunity out there, like the jacks of the world for myself, right? Where there was no exit plan and there's an opportunity for the next generation of advisors to come in, serve that book, and then be able to grow that as well. And what I heard you say was important to me, or what stood out for me was the communication part. And I think finding, um, you know, mentors, I think it's important, just like we said with Lily connecting with Jay, with, um, with John was, you know, try to connect with um, local people in the industry and, and reach out to them more times than none. Um, you know, they are busy, but if you are presenting yourself and communicating with, with them on your interest, 
I, I can't imagine, you know, the right person will spend, you know, some time with you and even give you maybe more than five or 10 minutes and actually sit down and have a cup of coffee with you. So mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people that are willing to give you their time, but you just have to ask and communicate. Yeah. And the Definitely. community of NAFA is made up of individuals who are givers, right? You and I have been around long enough, right? You and I would have never met had it not been for NAFA, no. right? We have such a large network of people across the country and every single one of them are givers. And I consider you a friend and, uh, you know, we just happen to be in the same industry. And like you said, we have, we wouldn't have met without um, the industry organization. And I can now give you a call on the phone if I, and I have called mm -hmm. you up and, and asked for help or asked for your opinion and your expert advice. So um, that is one of the truly the most valuable things about the organization. That's why it's important for you to be a part of an organization like NAFA Mm -hmm. that will get you connected, involved. And you don't, and if it's not someone local, it could be someone in another state. And mm -hmm. uh, Evelyn is in New York and I am in Florida mm -hmm. and uh, just a phone call away. And we actually got, um, we got a question in the question and answer, but um, before I get to that, let me just tag on, um, you know, NAFA, just do my NAFA plug here. Um, we have student memberships available for, um, for students that is uh, $50 for a year. And that's an incredible, you get everything that everybody else gets, you know, the availability to the community. Um, we've got a member portal where you can, um, it's almost like our own private Facebook group that you can ask questions and things like that. Um, and it's a great, great springboard um, to that. Also, there is, uh, we've got a partnership with WebCE. Um, and I know, I think John talked a little bit about the licensing and things like that, but there's some um, pre-licensing courses and some study group courses. And, you know, to keep your certification, you've got to have CEs. So we've got a partnership with, uh, with WebCE that's available to our members to be able to start getting some of those um, accrued and, you know, getting you ready um, to get that licensure and things like that. Um, but the question that came up um, is from Ty. It says, would you be able to work off commission, salary or wage? And if you work off of off, work off, ugh, work off of commission, what was it like making the switch? So commission versus salary. You know, and, and for me, that was um, something that my family questioned, right? They're like, well, how are you going to go from knowing what it's going to look like on a week to week basis to not knowing. Right. And I had a much bigger vision for myself, right. That first job out of college, I still have the offer letter <laughs> that offered me $18,000 a year, by the way, I framed that. Right. And I knew that $18,000 a year was not going to get me anywhere. Right. So I, I had that conversation about, you know, $18,000, you know, in, in that year prior to joining this business. And I said to my mentor, I challenged him. I said, listen, I came here to make a six figure income. I need to make a six figure income in that first year. Um, Cause he knew how serious I was about that, by the way. So yeah, 18,000 steady for a year, or I didn't make a hundred. I made 98,200. I think it was, I have the paste up somewhere um, just as a little memory for myself. Right. Um, I rather take the the other one, right? But I had to have the confidence, the faith, the mentor, ask the questions, had the drive, the grit, the passion to go after it, right? Now, companies have different types of compensation models, by the way. So you want to ask about that, by the way. Some companies are straight commissions. Some of them provide you with a training allowance. Others will give you um, draw against commissions, right? And you have to kind of figure out which one you can um, really commit to, right? What makes more sense for you, if you will. Maybe some of those companies have internships, by the way. I know my company does a, an internship program um, where they'll let you test drive the position over a summer and then make a full-time commitment to it um, if it's the right fit for you in the fall, right? So there's lots of ways that you can enter into the business. You just got to explore every single one of them and figure out which one's the right fit. Hello, Ms. Geller. This is Elise speaking. And um, like they were saying earlier, I had a great conversation with uh, John Richardson the other day, and we're actually meeting again tomorrow to 
go more in depth. But the question that I have for you is if you were in my position right now, so I'm a sophomore, um, what would you be doing to prepare? So there are companies that um, have those internship programs that are not necessarily just for rising juniors and seniors. So I, I, I would spend some time um, figuring out who out there will offer you an internship. I, I believe in internships. I've got two kids um, currently in college. They're going to be graduating um, this May. Thank goodness. Um, one from law school, one from college, right? So I, I know what this is like. But one of the things um, that they've done along the way is internships to really figure it out. My daughter was a biochemistry major. We thought she was going to medical school. And because she did a, an internship with an orthopedic surgeon, she discovered that she didn't want that long runway, decided not to go to medical school, but decided to become a lawyer, by the way. And she's using her biochemistry, by the way. She's going to be an intellectual property um, attorney. Um, so sometimes it's about testing things out to see if it's the right fit for you. So that that would be like the number one thing is get internships to the industries, the companies that you think you might want to um, pursue after you've graduated from school. That would be the number one thing. Um, also talk to individuals that are in the different industries that perhaps you're you're thinking about pursuing, right? So the fact that you're having that face-to-face, -face, it sounds like, or maybe Zoom with John, right, um, is a good thing because you're getting inside information on the career, right? And, and ask them not only about, you know, the good stuff, but what are some of the challenges as well, right? And will you have the ability to say, yeah, that's that's a challenge, but I'll be able to move that, right? And I'll be able to, to really overcome that as well. So I would say those are the top two things. Thank you so much. And um, I would be really interested in hearing more about the internship program um, that you said your company offers. Wonderful. What part of the country are you in, Lily? Um, I go to school in Mississippi and I'm from Kentucky, so I definitely have to do a relocation, but I'm totally open to that. Okay, wonderful. Look forward to hearing from you. Can I ask my question or is there somebody else that? No, go ahead, please. All right, perfect. Um, I, I had a question regarding how do you gauge when you feel that you're kind of plateauing in your growth since you've been growing for such like a long time and your career has, you know, it's it's been over an extended period of time. How do you gauge when you feel like you're kind of slowing down in your growth and what do you do to like combat that? Yeah, well, first of all, for me, it presents itself in a physical way. You know, I'm tired, I'm sluggish, I'm bored, right? So I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you an example. During um, during COVID, many of our companies um, shut down and we were then told that we would be working remotely. And for many of us that have been working in the industry a very long time, we're accustomed to the face-to-face, -face, not necessarily over this Zoom thing that we had to master during COVID, right? So um, one of the things that I discovered um, was that I was starting to feel sluggish because I didn't have people to people interaction, right? So what did I do? I got involved in a study group that met every single day at 6 a.m. in the morning. Now, you, you might say, well, that must have been exhausting. No, it actually rejuvenated me. So that I got up early and by the time we were done in that hour, I was ready to go because I'm a morning person, right? It might be different for other people, right? So for me, I discovered, and I, I'm 30, this is going to be my 31st year in the business. I found that after whatever, 28 years in the business, that that rejuvenated me. I had the opportunity to meet with like-minded individuals. Do you know what kind of commitment it takes to get up at six o'clock in the morning every single day? Well, Cheryl, you probably know because the baby gets you up at that hour, right? But if you don't have to, right? My kids are gone, right? They're away at school. Committing to getting together at 6 a.m. every single day for our own personal development, 
right? Now that wasn't getting a designation or another letter after my name or anything like that, but it was about personal development, about growing. Um, and I, I did a lot of that during COVID, by the way, because it gave us the opportunity to do that. And I developed such strong bonds with people that I would have never met throughout my company throughout the country, by the way. So it was amazing. So sort of different ways for you to be able to do that, but that's the most recent example that I can share with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is great. Thank you guys for going off mute and um, and asking your questions. Does anybody else have any uh, final questions for Evelyn before we wrap up for the day? Well, I just wanted to uh, once again thank Evelyn um, and Cheryl. You'll get to hear uh, more from next week uh, as she comes on with Derek Sheets to talk about their um, their paths. But um, thank you once again, Evelyn. Uh, appreciate everything that you do for our industry, your clients, and also for our future leaders. So everyone, we will see you back here uh, next week, same time, uh, same Zoom link, and uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.